All right, everything's powered on and working great. Take a look at the fan spinning there. Hey everyone, today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the ID Cooling FX 360 Pro AIO. ID Cooling is sponsoring today's video, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product or you wanna find out more about it, the link to this cooler will be in the video description. Take a look at the retail box and packaging. This is a 360 millimeter AIO. They walk you through some key tech specs on the back, like socket support. This supports the latest and greatest from both Intel and AMD, AM4, AM5, and we have our LGA 1200 and 1700 sockets supported. Now let's go ahead, let's open it up and see what's inside. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our product literature featuring our installation guide complete with QR codes. All the included contents listed out for you, followed by step-by-step -step setup instructions for both Intel and AMD mounting. That continues on here. Then we have our fan connection and a support section in the guide. Next, you'll see all the included hardware here, multiple kits, fan screws, brackets, clips, back plates, everything we need for Intel and AMD, three identical 120 millimeter cooling fans. Take a look at those. Here's the specs on the backside too, up to 1800 RPMs. Very satisfying to spin that. And they all have your typical four pin PWM connector. And we actually have your daisy chain capabilities right off the end of each fan. We have included thermal paste here, the Frost X45. We also have a fan extension cable. And then lastly, we have the AIO itself. Let's take a look at the radiator first, 360 millimeters, black finish. See it from all sides and angles. And now we can look at the pump housing. On the back side, we have to remove this before installation. Then we have our cables right there. This can rotate and move, so you can position it properly in your build. And then we have a nice textured plastic cover up at the top. Now let's go ahead, let's get this set up and installed. Here's a look at all the parts and pieces for our Intel 13900K CPU installation. We have all the Intel parts and pieces over here, backplate, Intel standoffs for LGA 1700. We also will be using the nuts in this kit right here. We have our Intel bracket for the pump. And then we have all of our fan parts and pieces as well as our thermal paste. First thing I wanna do is get the fans installed just so we can tidy things up and get them out of the way. So we're gonna install the fans just like you see here on our cooler. And I wanna make sure all the cables line up on the same side so we can easily daisy chain them together. So we just take a fan, line up the holes with the holes on the radiator, and then take four of the included screws. You're gonna be using the longer screws in this kit. You'll drop them in place and then use a Phillips head screwdriver to fasten all four screws tightly. Phillips head screwdriver, screw, attach together, and then just gently drop down in place, line up with the hole, and then tighten firmly. All right, we got all three fans installed. Now let's go ahead and connect them all together. Connections have been made. Now we'll take this end piece on this side and we're gonna add the adapter here so then we can connect it to our fan header on our motherboard. Nice length to that extension cable right here and just gently plug and connect everything together. Now we're gonna add our Intel bracket right here. So when we make this connection, there's arrows on the bottom of this you can see that it's gonna be really fine and detailed, but right there, there's arrows that you're gonna line up with arrows on the bottom of this as well. It's gonna be a lot harder probably to see, but there's tiny arrows on both sides that you're gonna line up. So we'll take our arrows that's right here, we'll line it up and then just gently press this in place. It's gonna be pretty snug. You wanna push it all the way down arrow to arrow, and then you're gonna twist it clockwise to tighten and lock it in place. So make sure you have everything pushed all the way down, and then you're gonna twist to tighten. So it's gonna take a minute. It's gonna be really firm. There we go, we used a lot of force, but now we have everything locked in place. 
Now we have the back plate installed on our motherboard. Just push it up and through the back of your motherboard. That leads us to our next step where we need to install our spacers. Here's a close up of the LGA 1700 spacers. And those just go over and you press them down and into place. And you're gonna do that four times for the four different spacers. And now for us, the next step is we can put our thermal paste and then we can actually attach the pump. But I wanna go ahead and install the radiator on this side of our test bench here so that we can easily position the rest of the cooler in place. You'll have 12 small screws left out of the initial bag that we used to install the larger screws for the fans. They're gonna go in the 12 holes that you see right here, which we're gonna line up with the slots on our case. So you'll match the holes right there and then you'll take those screws and fasten them in through the back. It'll look like this when finished. Now it's time to apply our thermal paste. Now we're gonna line the pump housing up with the correct notch for our socket. In this case, for the LGA 1700 socket, we will be lining it up in the middle. So we'll do that middle notch for each side and then we'll fasten everything down in place with the included nuts. Now we'll get everything nice and snug with our screwdriver. Now it's time to connect the pump to the pump fan header on our motherboard. And now we're gonna connect our fans as well to the CPU fan one header on our motherboard. There we go, we have everything installed. Now let's go ahead, power it up and try it out. All right, everything's powered on and working great. Take a look at the fan spinning there. Make our way to the pump housing. Everything looks good. Backside look at the radiator, close up of the fans. And we'll look at everything from this side as well too. So far, so good. When looking at the performance of a cooler, it's always important to have a particular lens to look and see everything through. In this case, that's gonna be cost. That'll help us have a better understanding of all the data you're about to see. So we'll be comparing this FX360 AIO against the competition of all the other CPU coolers that we've reviewed. So first up in regards to cost, you will see that this is half the price of your typical CPU cooler. So keep that in mind as we look at all the rest of these specs. First, we have our idle temp. So all the data you're seeing is compared to the same test bench setup that you see here with our Intel 13900K CPU. So at idle temps, 28 degrees Celsius, which is one degree less than the average. At 65 watts of power, 38 degrees Celsius, which is right at the average. For 95 watts of power, you're seeing a similar pattern here, 43 degrees Celsius, which is right at the average. Moving right along to 120 watts of power, we come in at 48 degrees Celsius, which is one degree below average. At 170 watts of power, 57 degrees Celsius, which is two degrees below the average. And having everything maxed out, running Cinebench R23, we peak at around 96 degrees Celsius, which is one degree above average. Next up in regards to max watts, we've never seen a value this high coming out of this test bench. So we peaked at 371 watts for our average with everything completely wide open. Pretty substantial boost compared to the average of around 334 watts. Next, we have our max speed, 5.5 gigahertz. Again, the highest we've ever seen with this configuration, about 0.3 gigahertz above the average. Moving right along to noise, at idle, we peaked at 48 decibels. Most of that noise, the loudest spot's gonna be coming from the pump housing as opposed to the fans. Those came in in the low 40s. And for max noise, we peaked at 70 decibels. That's about eight decibels above the average. You'll definitely notice and hear this spun up when everything's wide open. This will be easy to hear. So where's that leave us in regards to our ID Cooling FX360 Pro? Well, let me share with you my final thoughts. Here's what you need to know. This is my first experience with 
ID Cooling AIOs, and I gotta say, it definitely overachieved in my opinion. I can't believe for the cost of everything here that we can get as good a performance as we did. Sure, it's gonna run a little bit louder, but there has to be a compromise somewhere, right? So overall, count me impressed. Any budget builders out there, you want a 360 millimeter AIO, black fits your build, look no further, solid choice here to cool your CPU. In regards to things I wanna see improved in the future, it'd be all the same old, same old. I want it to run quieter, I want some RGB integrations, a screen, a better design, all of that stuff. But in regards to build quality, everything that's included, no issues at all. They could work on their instructions for installation. You might have a little bit of trouble if it's your first time ever installing one of these, but overall in regards to the build quality and the performance as well as what you're paying, this is really a solid choice.